Namaste, class. Namaste, Chef. How y'all doing today? Doing good. Doing good. Yeah, you looking pretty in pink, Auntie. <laughs> <laughs> yes, ma'am. This is Cooking and Learning with Care segment with Chef Destiny and Chef Aja. It is a beautiful Wednesday. It is Fun Facts with Snacks Wednesday. Hey, Mr. Stacy. Hey, Brent. Hey, Shawanda. Where are you at today? Come on in. Move right along. Aja, are you ready? Yes, ma'am. Okie dokie. All right, good morning, everybody. Hope everybody's doing beautiful, feeling wonderful today on this beautiful day. Today I'm gonna to be making with, for you um, blackberry dumplings. Um, <laughs> if you like blackberries, this is a delicious treat. It's simple, it's easy. Um, so let's get into it. All right, Can everybody see my pan? All righty. Yes. What you need to start with, is you're gonna start with some blackberries. Now I use some frozen blackberries. You can use fresh blackberries, that's up to you. Um, you would use way more than this, you know, we're cooking a demo. So that's why I'm using this amount. You will use probably about two pounds of blackberries for four servings, okay? But it's up to you, it's your dish. So you put some blackberries into the pan, hit it with a little bit of water, all right, now I'm gonna use a little bit of lemon extract. You can use fresh lemon juice. You can use lemon zest, it's up to you. Um, the lemon pairs real well with the blackberries. Um, it's sweet and it's tart. I also have some blackberry preserves that I'm gonna add to this. If you don't have blackberry preserves or if you can't find it, that's up to, you know, you can leave that step out. We're gonna turn up our heat a little bit. Now I'm gonna hit it with a little bit of sugar. If you don't want to use sugar, you know you can use agave. There's so many different sweeteners that we've discussed that you can use. Feel free to use whatever it is that you like. Now you would just let this cook, okay, on a low heat. Now for the dumplings portion. All right, move this out the way. You're gonna start off with one cup of all-purpose flour. You're then gonna hit it with um, a half a teaspoon of baking powder. Now, I, I like my dumplings with a little bit of spice, not spice like heat, but you know, seasons. So I'm gonna hit it with a little bit of cinnamon, some nutmeg, and a little bit of ginger. Now, just a hint of ginger so that the dumpling, like I said, has a seasoning. You mix it. I'm also gonna add some vanilla, all right? And I'm just eyeballing this. Now I also have some Crisco or some vegetable shortening, okay? I'm gonna hit it with about three tablespoons of that. And once again, I'm just, you know, eyeballing this. My hands are clean. All right. And the last tablespoon, let me wash my hands. All right, now we're gonna hit this with some vanilla almond milk. If you don't have almond milk, if you don't use almond milk, that's up to you. You can use some milk. All right, and you just mix this. And you would mix this. And after you mix it good, I let it sit for like five to 10 minutes, but that's optional, but I do. And it's gonna be kind of wet because when you put it into the blackberries and all the blackberry juice, it's gonna cook it with the juice, okay? And it's gonna puff up and it's going to firm. So don't be alarmed if it's kind of wet, all right? So let me get this out the way. Here I have some that I let sit a little bit. 
And you will just get you a scoop. Try to keep it uniform, but you don't necessarily have to. And you will just position the dumplings into that blackberry juice and those good blackberries. And then you will just cover this with the lid and let it cook on a low heat for about 20 to 25 minutes, checking on it to make sure, you know, everything's working okay. And when you are done, you have, hopefully y'all can see this, you have a delicious pot of blackberry dumplings. Yes. Mm. All right, and it's really delicious. Um, you can top it with frozen yogurt, with vanilla ice cream, whatever, you know, whatever you want to do. I'm just gonna put in a bowl so you can see. And if you don't want your sauce to be as runny, um, I like it like that. You you know, you can tighten up with a little cornstarch slurry. And you know, you just put your blueberries on top. And like I said, you can hit it with some ice cream or whatever. It's delicious. It's sweet and it's tart. It's really, really good. It you looks good it in the oven or cooked it right on the stove? Cooked it right on the stove. Oh, okay. Yep. And how long it took? For it to reach this consistency, about yeah. 20 to 25 minutes. Okay. But it's low, low heat. Mm -hmm. That's cool. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you. There's no other questions, Chef. That's all I have for today. All right. All right. Brent and Shawanda. Thank you. Oh, ready. Oh, Shawanda Damn. got some good light. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Good morning. All right. Good morning. Hello, Shawanda. These are my food hacks and tips. Number one, microwave an ear of corn and it'll fall right off the husk. Number two, separate yolks from white by gently squeezing a plastic water bottle over the cracked egg. When the bottle reinflates with air, it will scoop up the yolk. Number three, <laughs> if you cut the bottom of asparagus and place them in a jar of water. They will stay fresher for a longer time. Number four, when you find vegetables on sale, such as onions and bell peppers, buy more of them. Freeze them and put them in a Ziploc bag. And number five, throw a slice of apple in with baked treats to keep them soft and moist. If there's no other questions, that's all I have. Thank you so much. Brenton. Hello, hello. Good morning. Happy Wednesday to you all. Good morning. Happy Wednesday. Okay. Uh, number one, master your signature dish. Number two, heat up your pan before cooking. Number three, cooking accidents happen all the time, but it's how you deal with those accidents that can make or break your masterpiece. Number four, add your spice, add your spicy heat blast. Number five, always taste test. My hack, uh, pop a whole butternut squash in the microwave and zap it for two to three minutes. It'll be much easier to peel, seed, and cube. Hmm, okay. Thank you, Brent. You're welcome. I like that squash idea. Y'all, um, y'all know what time it is. Hope is here. I'm gonna tell y'all what time it is. For protecting lives and lowering cases, especially in long-term care, we can protect ourselves and those we care about. It's time to roll up oh, our no sleeves commercial. and get vaccinated. All right, y'all, listen up. What time it is today? Butter jelly time. 
Oh my. So oh, no. what I'm gonna do today, I'm making a grown up peanut butter jelly sandwich. But before we do that, I'm gonna give you some fun facts about peanut butter and jelly. I hope y'all like that song. I love it. <laughs> Thanks, Brent and, and uh IT Pam, y'all joining in on my craziness. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, today is for National Days. It is. I know it's National Ranch Day. I heard that in Kim's class. So this is my one of my favorite days. Um, National Blueberry Popover Day. National Mario Day. I guess that's the game. Uh, mm. National Pack Your Lunch Day. National Women and Girls HIV AIDS Awareness Day, National Registered Dietitian Nutritionist Day. Mm -hmm. And the fun facts about peanut butter and jelly. 94% of Americans have at least one jar of peanut butter at home. Everybody here, do y'all got a jar of peanut butter in y'all house? Yes. Can't hear nobody else, everybody else on me. All right, we're gonna move on along. In 1901, first reference to peanut butter and jelly appeared in the Boston Cooking School Magazine of Culinary Science and Domestic Economics. April 2nd is National Peanut Butter and Jelly Day. Oh, Skippy, that's a good kind. Skippy, <laughs> Peter Pan, who else? Who else is? And this is the no stir, no need to stir, creamy. Mm. Mm -hmm. No stir, okay. So it takes fewer than five gallons of fresh water to produce one ounce of peanuts. And peanuts add beneficial nutrients to the soil. A restaurant chain called Witch Witch, W-H-I-C-H, W-I-C-H, made 39,303 sandwiches in one hour to break the Guinness World Book of Records in 2015. Peanut butter and jelly. If you add marshmallow fluff, it is called a fluffer nutter. 540 peanut, it takes 540 peanuts to make one 12 ounce jar of peanut butter. The average person will eat at least, how many of y'all think peanut butter and jelly sandwiches in their lifetime? Mm. Mm. 15, 2,500. Close, 3,000. Mm. And how many times do y'all think peanut butter and jelly are eaten a month by adults? I know children probably eat it every day. 15? Oh, only three times. Okay. Average. Which is more popular for peanut butter and jelly? Strawberry or grape jelly? Grape. And strawberry, mm. my mm. favorite. 36% pick strawberry, 31% pick grape. 54% pick white bread and 56% pick smooth peanut butter. So that's the perfect peanut butter and jelly sandwiches with white bread, strawberry jelly, smooth peanut butter, and 80% of people like they crust left on. Who like they crust left on? I can eat it with on. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I can do either or. Yeah. And what is the famous sandwich that Elvis and Bill Clinton like? Nobody. Peanut butter jelly sandwich. <laughs> it's peanut butter and banana. Okay. Yeah, peanut butter and banana sandwich. All right. So we're going to move on along. Mayonnaise sandwich. I, I love a mayonnaise tomato sandwich. Mm. That All restaurant right, so. you name, it's, it's one uh, across the street from uh, Pont City Market. A what? The restaurant you name? The witch? Oh, it is? Yeah. Oh, mm -hmm. I want to go. Yeah. Okay, so the first one I'm going to do to get it out the way is make a peanut butter and jelly pocket. Now, I have me some Hawaiian bread 
You can use whatever bread you want. Of course, I have, I have, and all my life I've been calling this stuff Jiffy. It, it's just Jiff. <laughs> yeah, me too, Jiffy. Jiffy peanut butter, and it's just Jiffy. Jiff. So Maybe. what you want to do is you don't want to spread for this one I'm doing. You want to spread it in a circle like so. Because we're making a pocket. So we're going to do the same thing with the jelly. Just making a circle. Your grandfather liked peanut butter, jelly, bacon, fried egg, sandwich. Out of here. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's the grown up sandwich I'm making. Shout out to Granddad. Shout out to Granddad. Bacon, fried egg, peanut butter, jelly. Y'all, I'm swear to goodness that is exactly what I'm making, but I'm adding an extra ingredient to it. So now we got our sandwich. I only did the peanut butter and jelly in the inside. So now I'm going to take a cup. I'm using, you can use a glass, but this is the widest cup I found. So y'all can see. I'm going to go right in there. And that's why I just wanted that peanut butter and jelly in the middle. And they actually have a peanut butter and jelly restaurant. Did y'all know that? No. Where? I think it's in New York. Oh. All right. So. Uh -huh. I remember peanut butter and jelly and uh, uh, some soup when I was growing up. Ooh. All right. We almost got perfect. I'm going to just cut this little edge off. But that's how you do the peanut butter and jelly pocket. Aww. You know, like you buy it in the grocery store, they already come up. Right. But if you want to make it at home, that's how you do it. And we're going to set that to the side. I would just, I don't, I hate the waste, waste crust. Well, you know, because culinary food. All right, so for our grown up, peanut butter and jelly. I have some sugar bacon here. I got some sugar bacon here. I got my eggs. We're going to make a custard. Okay, so I need a little brown sugar, my my same same custard mix I did for our French toast. Let's just add a little brown sugar. I'm gonna add some vanilla, some nutmeg and cinnamon. Mm -hmm. Let me grab a fork and the last thing we're gonna add is our milk. So we're going to mix that up. Maybe granddad came to me in a dream, IT, and whispered this in my ear. <laughs> Must have, yeah. And the bacon was already cooked in brown sugar. I'm going to add a little milk. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
And I remember him making it, and when you pick it up, the juices be running on your fingers. <laughs> Uh, yeah, that sounds just about right. All right, so we mixed up. Okay, I'm gonna set that to the side. The last thing I'm gonna add is just a little lemon zest, and these are and these are grown ups. That's why we're doing this. It's not just your typical. Peanut okay. butter and jelly sandwich. We said we're turning it up. Y'all should be glad I ain't adding no, no alcohol. I was thinking about that when you was making the um French toast. Oh yeah. That goes perfect. Hold on, y'all know I gotta clean up. All right, so we're going to assemble our sandwich. And we need three pieces of bread for this grown up peanut butter and jelly. I know, I told y'all the rest of this week it was going to be bad. I gave y'all the healthy on day one. So don't be fussing. All right, so for our layers, we're going to need jelly. And you could go all the way to the edge with this this time, because we're not cutting it. Y'all know, as long as we got peanut butter and jelly, shouldn't really nobody go starving. Should be no world hunger. Much food that this world got. This is ridiculous. All right, next our peanut butter. All the way to the edges. We want everything to stick. And last but not least, our marshmallow fluff. Mm. Y'all, this marshmallow fluff really go good on everything. Brownie. Be careful in spreading it because you know it's really sticky. All right. All right. So, marshmallow fluff is going in the middle. So, we're going to flip. Let me make sure I'm doing this right. Yeah, that's what we're going to do. So that's our three layers. Y'all see that? Mm-hmm. All right. All right, let me turn our heat up, add some butter. I know y'all might not eat it, but I know your kids and your grandkids will. Let me scoot this over a little so y'all can see some more. I'll just do that to get all the butter off the paper. Mm -hmm. So now we're going to dip it into our egg bacon lemon mixture. Right. Get it nice and soaked in there. And get it soaked on all the sides. Put that bacon on there. This don't make no sense. <laughs> 
It don't make no sense. Your girl. <laughs> <laughs> don't make no sense. You know I'm just waiting on how you go. Man, yeah, your grandfather would love that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Little pocket we made too. Oh my goodness. Was this a night vision? <laughs> uh -huh. A night, a night dream and vision of this. Oh, yeah, it came in. It must have. Because I don't know. I don't eat this. <laughs> I mean, I eat peanut butter and jelly, but I've never thought about putting bacon in and making it like French toast or none of that. Never. But after, you know, you watch Chopped and you experience enough in the kitchen, you know, you can make a lot of things work together. Of the good of your belly. <laughs> All right, we just want them to get golden brown on each side. And then, what do y'all think will go perfect with this grown up peanut butter? Oh, gosh, it smells so good. Mm mm mm. Not chocolate. We're going to do a chocolate covered strawberry <laughs> milkshake. <laughs> Your favorite chocolate. I tell you, you if you didn't put a recorder in my room, what's going on? <laughs> Let's give it a flip. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's pretty. Oh, yeah. Ooh, and it just smells so good. Now, me personally, I like to put my French toast in the oven to finish right. it off. So all those layers can be cooked because, you know, that egg and stuff got to get soaked down into that bread. And just I like to have the crispy exterior, the soft, gooey interior. So that's what I'm going to do with mine is finish it in the oven. All right, so and you can stand it up. Look at that, though. It's already looking. Yeah, that looks good. So delicious. In our little pocket. So cute. Mm. So we're going to finish that off in the oven. That off on fire. All right, moving on to our milkshake. Let me get this out the way. Come on. Got some fresh strawberries here, some almond milk, some chocolate syrup, got some Hershey strawberry syrup, some yogurt, some agave if we need it, and some hot, hot chocolate packets. All right, so I already have my ice cream in here. And I'm going to add 
My strawberries, and I had frozen these so they would last because I had them last week. I want this to be really strawberry, and I want that strawberry juice. Mm. Save one strawberry just to garnish with. Now, we're also going to have to add some of this strawberry syrup, a little bit of almond milk, a little bit of yogurt, and it's probiotic, so that's good. said it's chocolate covered strawberry so both is good have a glass here one of my play dads who um passed away uh i called him dad reverend porter he gave me all of these in there so they're mason jars with the little standings are handmade i have some melted chocolate here i'm just gonna get it to stir and blend it up one more time make sure everything got good in there Now, if you want your milkshake thick, then that's up to you. I don't really like them too thick, then you can't really suck it through the straw. Now, we're going to take some of this chocolate, and it's going in the bottom, like so. <laughs> Here's our strawberry milkshake. Wow. Yummy. Let me see if my chocolate going to act right. Let's see. Oh, yeah. It's acting all right. Some cool whip. Yeah, we're going to give it a dollar for cool whip. Don't matter if it's messy. Let's do, where's my, my strawberry? Already mm. cut. Now, if you wanted to dip your chocolate in, you could your cup into the chocolate and freeze it. That's totally up to you. This is what I'm doing. I'm just gonna throw a couple chocolate chips on the top. Make it a yeah. little more simple. Chef. Yes. Did you put fingernail polish on that strawberry? Did I put what? Oh. <laughs> no. <laughs> that, that strawberry looking red. <laughs> I froze it, ma'am. I didn't put fingernail polish on it. So there we got it, yo. Chocolate covered strawberry milkshake. 
É melhor que o Nazão, gente. Então, vamos, Nazão. Talking praise to my ship like that, okay? God bless you. <laughs> <laughs> so there you got it. Hey, just, uh, I get it's a little too early for me to be eating, but I'm gonna just taste it for y'all. <laughs> yeah, taste it for us. That don't make no sense. Ooh, Lord. <laughs> And that's probably all the sugar I could have today, man. Thanks. <laughs> okay. After our uh, French toast get done, I'll plate it up and show y'all. But now let's get on to the phone. Hey, girl. Hey. They just announced that the Darnell Center will be giving shots this next week. Uh, yeah. I'm going to leave it in there about five to uh, ten minutes. Okay. All right. Now we're going to move on. I don't know who that is talking track. Okay. Me, Juliet. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm on. Uh... All right. Thank you. All right, so we're going to move on to share my screen. I want to show y'all a different way to make peanut butter and jelly, which I thought was so cool. I wouldn't want to eat it, but it looked it really cool. So here we go. Come back to the Awesome Report channel. If you're just tuning in, make sure you hit that subscribe button so you won't regret it. Today we're going to be making the smoothest, the softest, the fluffiest PB and J sandwich you've ever seen. It's a gelatin peanut butter and jelly sandwich. Mmm. Let's add six tablespoons of sugar. Mmm. Sweet magical powder. Let's also add two teaspoons of agar powder. Now let's mix this all up. Gotta make sure everything completely dissolves. Now let's add a cup of milk. This will help us get that white bread color. Perfect. Now let's turn on the heat. We have to bring this to the Check in on it and give it a stir here and there. Perfect. Now find a baking pan that can make a square shape. Spray some cooking oil. This will make the jelly come out easier later. Now let's pour in our bread liquid. We don't need to completely cool down. Now that's supposed to be the bread. While it's hot. Mm. You can tell that this liquid is still super hot. Let me pop these bubbles. You want to let this cool before you put it in the fridge. Okay, it's ready to go in the fridge for about 30 minutes. All right, while our bread is warming, let's add another cup of water into a pot. Add three tablespoons of sugar. One teaspoon of car powder, and let's add three tablespoons of peanut butter. Yep, we're going to be making our peanut butter jelly this time. Before turning the heat on, you can try to break the peanut butter down. Let me just push this around. This kind of reminds me of something pretty disgusting. Not going to say it. Well, Ew. You know what? This peanut butter does not want to break down. Let's just turn on the heat. Thanks to the power of editing, I saved you a lot of time. Okay, now let's bring this to a boil. Mm, I know you can't smell this, but this peanut butter smells delicious. Actually, should I be calling this peanut bubble? <laughs> Just kidding. Sorry if that was too late. All right, so we took the bread jelly out of the fridge. Does anybody know why he's pouring that over the spatula? Evenly? To cool it off as it go down. Nice and so it, it it doesn't just you know plop down is? and make a hole in the gelatin that's already there. Oh, okay. Okay. So okay. It, it falls evenly and yeah, for it to cool. Evenly. Yeah. Okay. That's most of it. We're going to need five tablespoons of strawberry jelly. Let's dissolve everything. Is it the sugar that's helping it crystallize or stays? And the, the agar, A G A R. The yeah, agar okay. powder, too, like okay. gelatin. Now we're going to put okay. it on top. Excellent. Since we're 
since we are making a PB and J sandwich, let's add another white layer. Mm. Take our bread. Beautiful. Okay, so we have to put this in the fridge one last time for 30 minutes, and our sandwich should be ready. 30 minutes went by really fast. Let's take our sandwich out of this baking pan. Clearly, the cooking spray did not help. Oh my gosh, are you serious? Get out. Be shy. Everyone wants to see how beautiful you are. Okay, this thing is being super good. Put a warm rag on top. Oh, yeah. There we go. I, I would not this eat that. So oh, wow. Out perfectly. Darn, that bottom bread part is killer. Okay. Let's slice this up to see the inside. Ooh, nope. That, that looks pretty good, though. Give me it's a not a peel to so me. Make a nice square. Mm -mm. Okay, so that bottom piece of bread is sticking up with the jelly in the ring. I'll at least try it. It's annoying when it just slides around. I knew you would. But that probably happened because we let the liquid cool too much. We still want to have some... Now he cutting off the ends of the bread. That texture, <laughs> just, uh -uh. I would try it, but I wouldn't. That ain't nothing I would just be I making. Another for. little spin on the peanut butter jelly, just like another, it's kind of like a dessert. Yeah. All right. If you remember, it's sliding too much. For me. It probably tastes really good, but it just, I don't know. All that slip, slipping, slipping and sliding. <laughs> <laughs> Wow. I wonder why they just didn't put a toothpick in it or something. Yeah, because it's doing too much slipping in the So if you have a sweet tooth, this is the recipe for you. All right. Well, there y'all have it. Weirdest <laughs> peanut butter and jelly I ever seen. All right, now we're going to go to the world's most expensive milkshake. I gotta see this. Hi, I'm Joe Calderon, creative chef here at Serendipity. It's a hundred dollars. Today I'm going to show you how to make the world's most expensive Ooh. milkshake. Here we have our milkshake glass, and it's no ordinary milkshake glass. This is blinged out, embellished with over 3,000 crystals provided by Swarovski and designed by Crystal Ninja's Kelly DeFries. Here we have our Jersey cream, and these are from cows originally bred in the Channel Island, and this breed is popular for the high butterfat content. <laughs> We have Devonshire clotted cream. It's made from heating milk at a slow pace until all the golden cream rises. Next, we have our Madagascar vanilla. The plants from this vanilla bean take three years to mature. And here we have our Tahitian mm. ice cream. It's made with Tahitian vanilla beans that are sun cured. We're going to plate these with 23 karat edible gold to give the inside of the milkshake a little bling to match the outside. Plate it with our 23 carat paper green. Called Itzone, which is donkey caramel sauce. It's a very rare sauce. Donkey caramel sauce? Hazelnuts, fresh donkey milk, and cane sugar. We have a Luxardo maraschino cherry. These are produced in Luxardo, Italy. And they're dense and chewy, sweet tart flavored, and they're soaked in the fruits veined liquor, the Marasco liquor. Mm. Isn't that incredible? Yeah, really I'm pleased to present the Guinness World Records title for the most expensive milkshake to Serendipity 3 for their $100 Lux milkshake. Congratulations, you are officially amazing. You put that gold on anything, they can charge you a hundred dollars or more. Yeah. All right, before we get out of here, a small little quiz. And the crystal. Mm -hmm. uh -oh. There we go. All right. Question one, the good old peanut butter and jelly sandwich is a classic American favorite, usually containing grape jelly. If you swap the jelly with marshmallow fluff, what kind of sandwich have you got? A fluffer butter, a fluffer butter. 
The who what now? I say a fluffer butter, but that's just me. Anybody else? Number one. The first one. Because we went over it. Yeah, it's fluff. No, it's the third one. I think it's fluff or nutter. It's fluff or nutter. Oh, okay. But we'll see what's right at the mm -hmm. end. All right. This sandwich contains Swiss cheese, corned beef, sauerkraut, Russian dressing. Ruben. Ruben. All right. This sandwich is named for its home city and contains beef, onions, and Swiss or provolone cheese served in a long Philadelphia. Correct. <laughs> but we'll see at the end. This sandwich is known as a pop. New Orleans. <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> Picture here is a BLT short for bacon, lettuce, and tomato. What would you have to do if you wanted to make a BLT into a club sandwich? Cut it, cut it, and, into, um, oh, cut it up. Say, uh oh. Say what? We only can pick one. Which one? Add another layer. Okay. Yeah. The sandwich here is one of the mm -hmm. lesser known American sandwiches. It's a bread pocket known as Runza or Bidarock. Bitter, and it usually contains a by rock, B rock, and it usually contains onions, beef, and cabbage or sauerkraut. From which reason does the Runza originate? Argentina. Eastern Europe. Where are we going with? <clears throat> I don't know. <laughs> oh, you I said did. Eastern Europe. We're going I with did. that. This sandwich is a messy one to eat. Hence his Lock name. Up. Lock the Joe. <laughs> Sloppy Jim, Jerry, and John. <laughs> Sloppy <laughs> Jerry. <laughs> uh -huh. The Cuban sandwich picture here originated among Cuban immigrants in Florida. Which of these ingredients is not a traditional ingredient of a Cuban sandwich? Tomatoes. 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 Mm. The filling of this sandwich is an omelet. Named for a city in Colorado and containing ham, peppers, and onions. With that in mind, can you guess what the name of the sandwich is? The Denver. Denver sandwich. Boulder. Boulder. Wait, you said Colorado? Well, I say Boulder. I say Boulder, like Boulder, Colorado. Well, we Denver, also Colorado. <laughs> All, All right. right. Mufaletta is both the type of bread and a meat sandwich. Made from said bread, it was introduced to the U.S. by Italian immigrants along with salami, which spicy Italian sausage originating in Bologna and, hey, contain, and containing cubes of pork fat is used as a filling. Pancetta. 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 Okay. okay. Yeah. Probably, probably mortadella. <laughs> We're going to go with y'all answers. Here we go. Submit an answer. Bluff or nutter? Bluff or nutter? Okay. Y'all got Ruben. that one right. Ruben, got it right. Philadelphia. Philadelphia, I knew them too. Wait, hold on. Let me see what they just said about the Ruben. Oh, the Reuben is not named after Joseph's oldest brother in the Bible. I didn't know people <laughs> thought it was. <laughs> Reuben. I didn't know people thought it was. Right. <laughs> I didn't know that was a thing. Okay, number three was Philadelphia. Number four, New Orleans. Number five, add another layer of bread and extra filling. Look at y'all on the road. Number six, Eastern Europe. Yay. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Number seven, Sloppy Jim, Joe, Jerry. It's yeah. correct. John. <laughs> John, Jim, and Jerry. Number eight, Cuban sound was tomato. Number nine was Denver, correct. Woohoo! And the only one y'all got wrong, but I can <laughs> tell y'all, was the pancetta. It was mortadella. 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 So, so y'all know mortadella is an Italian sausage made from cured, cured pork and flavored with black pepper, myrtle berries, and pistachios. 
And mm. it okay. All right, y'all did excellent. Only one wrong. That's excellent. See, look how much food connoisseurs y'all becoming. Hey. There's some old regular executive chefs on here. Hey. All right, we're going to um, end on this note. It's been a pleasure. Let's give ourselves our love. Fall in love with the process of becoming the best version yes. of yourself. Yes. And we're going to leave out of here. <laughs> y'all have a wonderful Wednesday. We have a wonderful Wednesday, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Love y'all. Bye. Bye.